volunteers here at New Hope Church have been working since 3 in the morning to prepare hundreds of hot meals for evacuees staying in shelters in both Ka'au and Pohoa. Put a corn in a small one. It's not the time to preach. It's not the time to push church. It's about loving on people. Inside the kitchen at New Hope Church in Hilo, volunteers are whipping up something unusual. When you guys go to the shelter, you're going to realize the need. A hot, home-cooked meal. Likely the first one some eruption evacuees will have eaten in days. Those people lost their homes, so they don't get to just walk into their fridge and open it up and take something out and cook whatever they want. They're just eating whatever people are dropping off. That's why every Thursday for the past six weeks, these parishioners have been up before the sun. So we um, open up at 3 a.m. We start prepping at 3.30. Providing comfort through their cooking. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our volunteers, they come in and they're all joyful. Some people love to cook. Some people just want to do dishes. Today, they'll prepare, deliver, and serve close to 1,000 meals. That's the food that they have prepared with their hearts, God. At the shelter in Ka'al, our cameras focused on the food to respect the privacy of those who were there. People, they're really thankful. As this simple gesture provided a temporary escape, binding this tight-knit community even closer together. As long as it's going on, as long as as there's people in the shelter that need food, we're committed to doing this. On Hawaii Island, Allison Blair. In the Lower East Rift Zone, activity continues with little change. Lava from the Fisher Aid Fountain continues to reach heights of about 175 feet as measured during the overnight hours. The lava pulses, sending a shower of hot lava fragments over the rim of the cinder cone, filling it slightly higher and wider. The lava exits Fisher Aid, traveling at a rate of about 17 miles per hour. Uh, it slows down significantly toward the quarry to about two miles an hour and significantly less than that at the ocean entry. At the ocean entry, lava is entering in the southern part uh, near the vicinity of vacation land, producing a robust steam and laze plume. The lava has now created a lava delta in seaward that is approximately 380 acres in size. Up at the summit, subsidence continues with the withdrawal of magma at depth. The popular Overlook parking area has now slumped into the crater. Uh, this area was closed since 2008. Earlier this week, crews installed temporary GPS stations to track the rate of subsidence at the caldera. And today, a UAS a team, a drone team, will be up trying to take pictures, weather permitting, of the changes that have occurred in the summit to produce digital elevation models that will help characterize and track the extents of substance.
to have any kind of eruption, we have to have a system that is pressurized at depth, and it's usually gas-saturated magma that is more buoyant than its surroundings that's temporarily held in place in some type of subterranean storage area or magma chamber. But eventually the pressure will build to a point where the container breaks, and when the container breaks, the magma will find its way to the surface, either as a lava-forming eruption, if, for instance, the magma that's erupted allows gases to pass through it rather easily, Although, as you increase the silica content of a magma, it becomes more viscous and it's much less passive to gas moving through it. In other words, and the only way to get the gas out of the magma is actually for it to explode. You mentioned magma, you mentioned silica there. So my next question is, what is the composition of volcanic material? I know you have magma and you also have ash, rocks, things like that. What are the composition of these materials? Okay, so typically a, a volcano that's erupting in Hawaii will erupt basaltic lava, and that's a lava with about, say, 50% SiO2, maybe 12% iron oxide, maybe uh, 3 or 4% titanium oxide, maybe uh, 12 to uh, 14% aluminum, maybe 6% magnesium oxide, and maybe on the order of 2% sodium and potassium combined. And then the other thing that these magmas have within them is dissolved gaseous compounds like sulfur, chlorine, CO2, and water. When we're talking about uh, the gas coming out of the volcano, how dangerous is this volcanic gas? It can be, for instance, in the case of Hawaii, we have sulfur dioxide being emitted. You also have CO2 that is being emitted. And uh, literally at the fissure vents, the gases are coming out at roughly uh, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. So not only are they poisonous, they're at extremely high temperature. So being exposed to them is, is not a good idea. Since we've made the connection between uh, volcanic eruption and tectonic activity, in other words, do volcanic eruptions cause earthquakes or vice versa, earthquakes causing volcanic eruptions? There's been only a few cases where you can cite a large magnitude earthquake as having possibly driven a volcano into eruption. And by uh, this I mean like the 1960 uh, eruption of uh, Cotopaxi volcano. It literally had a magnitude 8 earthquake almost directly below its summit. However, one of the things that has to happen for a volcanic eruption to occur is you, whenever you break rocks in the subsurface to move magma, you're generating a lot of small earthquakes as, as the magma moves to the surface. And if you have sensitive seismometers distributed, say, within a 15-mile radius of the volcano summit, you'll record all those small magnitude earthquakes that are usually smaller than magnitude 2 but they tell us something is happening at the subsurface beneath that volcano. And as such, an increase in the number of small magnitude earthquakes beneath the volcano is often a herald that a volcanic eruption, you know, might be coming in the future. I'm from the corner side, the, the west side of the island. Um, right now that side's getting a big hit with the fog. My family's over there, my kids over there, my wife is over there, and you know, I, I'm here working. So it, it feels good to, to provide the support and to also think of every, this whole island because it's, it's affecting this whole island. What we do is we drive around the community um, basically supporting HPD and um, observing any type of unsafe act, acts or anything like that. We also um, drive around to kind of show the citizens, residents, uh, that we're here and in support of them. It's important that they know that we're here so that we, uh, they, they don't feel alone. They see us driving around and they see soldiers driving around and they see, uh, you know, they don't really get that over here. This is a small isolated area. So when they see that, I believe in their heads, you know, they're not forgotten or dismissed or anything like that. Another reason we're out here is to uh, deter you know, acts of crime, acts of hate, looting, you know, a lot of the uh, people, the evacuees that left their homes, they left it, you know, they left everything, everything's there. And a lot of people that think, oh, that's up for grabs, it's not. So we gotta kind of show that that's what we're here for today. Uh, it's very meaningful. Um, 
because you know we this is something that we as guardsmen this is our priority mission to take care of our home i guess no words can really describe that very little change in the lower east rift zone of the big island today as lava continues to flow from fisher eight through kapuho and into the ocean fisher six meantime is starting to weaken Way County today confirms 577 homes destroyed by lava and earthquakes, and 894 people officially registered for assistance with FEMA or the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The Disaster Recovery Center is open daily at Kia'o High School. That's between 8 in the morning and 8 at night. U.S. Geological Survey reports Pele's hair and other volcanic gas fragments that can irritate your skin and eyes are still dusting the ground within a few hundred yards of Fisher 8 could be carried as far away as Pahoa and Hawaiian Acres. Here's a live look at Halimaumau Crater at the summit of Kilauea tonight. The camera filled with a plume of ash. And as explosions keep happening, scientists in Hawaii Volcano Observatory report the crater continues to widen as walls continue to collapse. Hawaii County is urging state lawmakers to hold a special legislative session. The county says it needs further emergency funding assistance due to the ongoing destruction being caused by the Leilani Estates eruption. Council members say more funding will be needed for road repairs, shelters, and a loss of taxable real property. Lava has now covered nearly 6,000 acres and destroyed hundreds of homes. Senate President Ron Kouchi says the legislature is ready to help, but concrete solutions to specific issues must be created before any special session could happen. Back to Punanawa, Big Island Church is planning a new village of micro-homes for eruption evacuees. It could be ready by early August. Our Allison Blair is here with the story, all new at 6. Allison? Hebo's Connect Point Church is preparing to build 10 micro units in Hawaiian Paradise Park. The pastor tells me he expects to get county approval for the project any day now. So work on the foundation can start this weekend. Over the past week, this lush one-acre lot off Kololi Drive has undergone a transformation. The back of the lot. Pastor Dion Maeda says the progress is a product of teamwork. Earlier this month, several Hawaii Island churches put out a call to their congregations and in a single Sunday managed to raise enough money to purchase 10 of these 120 square foot micro homes. Several local companies have also donated their supplies and services to get the project off the ground. These are the everyday working people who sacrificially giving because they see the need in the community. As of Tuesday, the county said it knew of 477 eruption evacuees in need of housing. While the homes here are only temporary, Pastor Maeda says it will provide people stability until something permanent comes along. It's a safe place that they can lock up their things, close the door when they leave. While the homes are paid for, some of the infrastructure is not. Money is needed for utilities, as well as things like restrooms and showers, a community kitchen, and a place to do laundry. Our hope is to raise at least probably another 25000 would kind of complete the, this project. Vacancies and resignations at Hawaii's public schools. The head of the teachers' union says it all comes down to money. Our Ashley Nagaoka joins us with more. Ash? Thank you, Kiahi. DOE employment records show more than 400 teachers resigned and left Hawaii during the 2016-2017 school year. That's an increase of 84% in resignations since 2010. That number didn't surprise Carrie Rose, a Wailua elementary school teacher who is getting ready to move to Colorado for another teaching job. The 34-year-old mother of two says she always dreamed of raising her family here in Hawaii, but on a teacher's salary, she he says it's extremely difficult. It's sad that if I want to stay here, I have to choose something other than teaching, and I don't want to choose something other than teaching because that's that's my passion. That's what I'm meant to do. We've got to be able to increase teacher salaries, give them more incentives to go into teaching. Otherwise, if this trend continues, there may be a day where we have 2,000 classrooms that don't have teachers. 
Rosen Lee says he was shocked by the latest DOE numbers. He says teacher vacancies are up 51 percent from 2011. The number of unlicensed teachers who did not meet state qualifications rose 63 percent, and the number of in-state education program graduates dropped 29 percent. Now, HSTA hopes voters will approve a plan to tax residential investment properties to help fund public education. It will be on the ballot in November. It's opposed by the counties who rely on property taxes and the real estate industry, which says it could raise rents for local residents.